Hey guys, Alex here. I'm the developer of LandNav, and in this training video, I'm going to show some of the common techniques and also go over the two uh, navigation methods. Uh, that's terrain association and dev reckoning. And uh, I'm not going to be covering them in exhaustive detail. You should uh, probably first read these uh, training lessons here in the uh, training menu. Uh, and then uh, watch this video because I'll be just demonstrating uh, these in action. Uh, so what I'm going to show you is uh, just the way you use the two techniques uh, combined together. You know, it's not just you know oh I'm I'm doing a dead reckoning type exercise or oh I'm only doing terrain association. Uh, you use them both together. You know, up to the point that you really can't separate the two. But usually when you're uh, you know training or reading instructions, you know you have to you have to define things some way or another. So so just because it's written as two different methods doesn't mean you use them you know exclusively from each other and then I'll also uh, be using uh, some some of these common techniques that are in here and pretty much anytime you do a land of exercise you'll whether you do it consciously or not you'll be using a lot of these techniques they're they're really just kind of common sense but it's uh, definitely a good idea to review them because uh, you know it, it might not occur to you to do something like this and and uh, it, these can really kind of save your butt so definitely uh, scroll through these. Like you can see here, it really doesn't take too much to explain them. A picture and a few words is enough. Common sense stuff, but it's definitely definitely good to review. Okay, so um, for this, I, uh, I'm playing an exercise that I have not played before. I haven't practiced it, and I wanted to do that just because this way uh, I, I might you know make some mistake, and then if I have to troubleshoot through it, uh, troubleshoot through it, that will be you know beneficial, I think. So, um, of course, I'm going to try my best not to, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, so I've loaded exercise uh, uh, FF01. This is in the beginner difficulty group. You can see it's not too long. I only have one control point. I'm starting here from the center of this uh, clearing, and I'm going west, almost straight west, to this point that is uh, kind of on the way up this hill. So uh, the first thing I'll start doing is, you know, what I just did to get a general sense. Be like, okay, I'm going west. I'm going up a hill towards a, you know, a, a, a steep, uh, you know, a, really a ridge of, uh, you know, they might not be big enough to be mountains, but uh, they're the tallest hills we have in this whole map. So I'll I'll call them mountains. Uh, but we have this ridge line that's up here, and we're headed up towards that. Uh, to our east, you know, is mostly flat, flat ground. Same thing with our north. So it just it gives us a general lay of the land. I always like to start uh, with that, and also take a moment to just look around. Be like, okay, that's north. The way I expect to be going is uh, west that way. And then I'm also taking a gauge of my weather. Be like, okay, it's pretty foggy. I can I can still see about a kilometer or so. Um, but you know, I'll take that into account. Now, uh, I'll get my notepad, the notes page ready, and the first thing I'll do is just get a distance and direction. I, I probably won't just follow that directly, but it's good to see. I'm gonna add my gene angle, uh, so it's gonna be about two. Uh, 77, 277, and about 900 meters. So I'll just write that down, 277 for 900 meters. Now the question is, you know, dead reckoning is the skill of, you know, following an azimuth and going for a certain distance. Basically it means using distance and direction. And so uh, if I measure, you know, distance and direction like I just did on the map, and then I just follow that, uh, on the ground, you know, using my compass to follow the direction and then counting my pace to measure the distance, that would be dead reckoning more or less in a nutshell. Uh, however, you know, it's daytime, I got some visibility, I got terrain that I should be able to read. And so, uh, you know, if I only followed that direction and distance and, you know, just had my eyes closed, I'm, I'm, and wasn't paying attention to the terrain or it was pitch black outside or something like that, I'm essentially traveling blind. Now, I mean, if you're really disciplined about counting your pace and you really uh, stick to that azimuth and 
you know, if you deviate it from it to go around the tree, you know, you correct for every little deviation. It's certainly possible you could you get to get to precisely where you're trying to go to. However, there is a lot of natural error that is involved. Uh, nobody can, you know, perfectly do dirt reckoning. It's not possible. Uh, even if you do everything correct, you'll you're still going to have errors because the compass itself isn't 100% reliable, especially when it's around things that are metal, like you know your helmet or your weapon, uh, you know ammo that's in your uh, rucksack. Uh, so there's always uh, error involved, and and just the every time you walk around a tree, you know you can't walk in a straight line in the forest, and so you can't um, you you don't want to rely on it 100%. Uh, you really want to couple it with terrain association. And so uh, what I'm going to do is kind of make an assessment of the terrain that I'm going to encounter on my way there. So before I start assessing terrain, it's always a good idea to orient the map. And it, orienting the map just means uh, you're making the map face the same way that you are. And to do that, it's pretty simple. You're just going to line up your, line up your compass with your map. So, you know, this is the... Uh, this uh, black line here that doesn't move is called the index line. You just have that pointing towards the maps north and you have them both lined up, you know, so they're parallel to each other. And then you just rotate them both together until the north arrow is aligned with the static line. And I'll show you, it's, it's automated in this game. All you gotta do is, as long as you're not moving, hold down the right, right mouse button and they'll go ahead and line up all the way until that north seeking arrow lines up with the uh, index line there. And then I can stow the compass and look at my map. Now my map is facing the same way. So I know that I'm here at the starting location and I'm looking west. And so this is what I'm gonna be seeing. And then what I like to do to make it even easier is just take, take some kind of straight edge. It can be the edge of your compass or, you know, I'm gonna use my protractor here and I'm gonna line it up Actually, let me use my compass because it rotates from the end there and then I can. So, and this gives me a sense like, okay, if I followed this line just straight, what would I be bumping into? You can see, okay, first I'm gonna go over this, uh, this steep, uh, uh, I'll call it a valley. I don't think it's technically big enough to be a valley, but I'm not sure what else to call it. <laughs> it's kind of like a little mini canyon, right? It's where the water's been kind of cutting a channel. Um, and so we're gonna go down that, come up it, and then we're kind of getting into flat ground that is slowly, slowly climbing up. You know, you can see over the course of uh, one, over oh, over the course of about one kilometer, we're going to gain 20 meters. So very gradual. And then once we're getting close to the control point, we can see that the, the ridge is kind of getting more narrow, right? So down here, it's pretty wide. Uh, it's about... Know, about 300 meters wide and by the time we get up there to close to where the point is it's about 200 meters wide so it's getting more constricted so this is just all to give me a sense of the lay of the land and I mean of course if I'm sitting here explaining it all it takes takes quite a while but if you're once you get good at reading these contours this is stuff that you'll be doing in a matter of seconds uh, and you would probably even want to make some notes you know just some general notes they can be really shorthand just stuff to jog your memory so that you know an hour later when you're wandering around up here you're not like oh what was i looking for again you can just check your notes and and have that good reminder so now i got a good sense of the lay of the land uh one thing one of the first things i always do is look for a backstop so let me show you what that is so a backstop uh, some people call them catching features i think that's more of an orienteering term but uh, it just means i prefer the term backstop just because it it's kind of literal. It's something that, you know, if you gone too far, uh, you know that, uh, or if you, if you hit it, you know you've gone too far. And you can see here in this example, I've highlighted this, uh, uh, this valley. Basically, if you were going for this point and all of a sudden you run into the valley, you would know you've gone too far. So a backstop is any, it doesn't have to be like a linear feature. You know, it could be a road, it could be power lines, it could be a valley, it could be a river. Uh, it could just be a large hill, something that you know, like, okay, I'll definitely be able to identify that. Uh, and also, I won't be able to avoid it, you know. So if I went too far 
you know, uh, this direction, or if I went too far this direction, or if I went right by the thing but just went too far, you know, like, you know, 100% I would run into the backstop. So you might not always have something to use as a backstop, but anytime you do, you should definitely use one. Uh, so in my case, I don't have a super strong backstop, but I do have something. You can see here that, it's uh, a little measurement, uh, about 100 meters past the control point, we have a steep rise. We go up you know, 10, 20, 30, and then 40 meters. So basically, if I've gone and all of a sudden I come to a steep slope, because at th that point we want, we've gone up a very gradual slope for a long ways, and all of a sudden we come and it's a steep slope, you know, rising uh, about 40 meters within the span of 100 meters then we know we've gone too far. Uh, likewise, if I go too far you know, to the left or right and I start going down steep slopes, uh, then I know I've gone too far. So I know that I need to come and basically stay within the gradual sloping part of this hill, not go down the back side of it and not go up the steep part of it. And so I've kind of drawn this U-shaped uh, ring around here so I kind of know all this area here and if I bump into any of that then I know I've gone past my point I've gone too far and then I also I kind of have some funneling features here uh, if I veer off too far to the right I'm gonna start dipping down into this valley here in which case I'll know I'm too far to the right same thing over here if I go too far to the left I'll start dipping down into this valley so if I'm walking along and all of a sudden I'm coming uh, kind of crossways into a steep decline, then I know, okay, I'm off my azimuth, I'm too far to the left or too far to the right, or too far to the right, depending on which side it is. Uh, so I've kind of read the terrain here and I've kind of created this funnel that's gonna you know, block me in and let me know, uh, give me feedback basically on, on where I am. Uh, Let's see if there's any of these other calming techniques. Attack points, I don't think are relevant in this case. Uh, the way I've described using those canyons on either side is sort of like uh, using a handrail. Uh, usually when you're using handrails, that would refer to like, you know, maybe uh, you can see a river or a road or something. You might not wanna walk right on the road for tactical reasons but you might keep it within sight, you know, be a few hundred meters away from it and just kind of follow that linear feature. Uh, we're, we're doing something similar here. So if we can see this canyon that's on our right or the one that's on our left, uh, or sorry, not canyon, but this, this valley, as long as we can see it and we kind of keep, keep it within our view, we know more or less we're heading in the right direction. So in a way, we can use those as uh, hand railing features. Uh, but I think we've got a pretty good plan here. Uh, I feel like I know the terrain pretty well now that we're going to be headed into. Um, and so I'm not going to rely 100% on terrain association though. Even though I'm confident I can read it, I still want to get some backup numbers. And so I went ahead and measured the azimuth to this. I'll double check it one more time. So let me uh, straighten these all out. So the azimuth so line them up and then add five to the GM angle, one, two, three, four, five. Now, if you don't know what the GM angle, uh, we'll have some other videos that discuss the GM angle, and you can also check the training lessons there. So uh, 278, 278, 277, that's fine. And then it's about 900 meters. Uh, so that gives me a sense, I'm gonna reorient reorientate my map, but that gives me a sense of how far I should go. So that way I'm able to kind of sanity check myself uh, even if I'm reading my terrain and everything makes sense, if I've gone like way over 900 meters, uh, that's gonna you know clue me in that something's wrong, right? Um, and likewise, if I didn't take this this measurement, and I said, oh yeah, I'll just head out west, and, uh, and there's just more likely that I make an error. So it's definitely good to uh, be using both styles, you know, dead reckoning and uh, terrain association. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is is get some notes. So let me get this guy here so I can do some measurements. So I can see here from my start point, we're gonna go for about 200 meters before we get out of the clearing. 
and then within 50 meters or so we're going to go across this first uh, uh, down and up and then at that point from the time we come over uh, come back out of that down and up you know here I'll make a big mark there hold down alt and right click you can make a fatter mark to, you can use it as a reference or, or whatever so from there then we go uh, another about 550 meters to our point. Um, and so I'm using the crossing of this valley here kind of as an attack point. An attack point is just some feature that uh, is just a feature that it, it's something bigger and easier to find. You know, if, So we're trying to find these little pinpoint locations, just like a little sign that's in the woods. And that can be pretty difficult. Uh, so if we can, basically get to a bigger thing, something that's harder to miss, uh, that's close by, then we can do kind of a fine-tuned little movement uh, to our final location. In this case, I don't have uh, any super obvious, you know, we don't have any lakes or anything like that up here. The top of the hill could kind of be uh, an attack point. A little bit tricky to find that, but it's, it's certainly possible. Uh, so that, that could be a secondary attack point. You know, if I'm if I'm searching around in here and I just can't find it, I'm having trouble. Uh, we could, you know, always jump up to the top of the hill, kind of reshoot our azimuth and, and try from there. Uh, but this this will be a uh, kind of like a, you could call it a phase line. And once I get across here, then I know okay, now I got I I got X amount of meters to go, and uh, and we can go from there. Okay, so I think we got a good plan. Let's uh, get a move on. So 277 for 900 meters. Uh, 277. Compass is uh, misbehaving because I was trying to spin around too fast. So 277. I'll line up my bezel here. Uh, so the bezel, just in case you don't know, you just line it up with the north arrow. That way you don't have to sit here and look at the small numbers, especially at night. Um, you can just, as long as they're matched up, you know you're in your azimuth. Uh, okay, so let's move out. Does this all make sense? Okay, so I'm just gonna uh, run and increase the time. Uh, because I know I got that good feature of getting across that initial valley. Uh, and so this is what I mean, you know, I, you, inevitably you gotta go around some bushes and stuff. So anytime I go around an obstacle, I try to, as soon as you can, get back on that azimuth. Uh, but no matter how careful you are, uh, you know, there's always gonna be some error, some deviation, so you have to factor that into your plan and that's why you can't you know you can't 100 percent use dead reckoning you can't 100 percent use train association you need them both working in conjunction together so sure enough uh, here is our valley and we know that once we come up the other side then we got about 500 meters to go to our point I'll get a quick, I'll just orientate my map here. Oop, didn't mean to speed up time. So let me orientate my map, take a quick look. And I'm just looking at the, uh, kind of the angle that this is facing at. Just kind of double checking that makes sense with what I'm seeing. And that helps me just kind of position and fix myself so I know I'm like right here, you know. Um, okay, so once we get across, we still got our plan. Okay, so I'll jog down across and I'm just looking for a good place where there's not so much brush so I can get through. Uh, we're not having to bushwhack. And I'll speed up the hill. 
like I've said before, be very cautious about using the speed up time. You know, use it like that. Just a little snippet just to kind of you know, cut through a, uh, a monotonous part where you, you know you're going already and you just want to speed it up. But don't, uh, if you're searching for something, don't use it to speed that up. You need to be slow and cautious in that case. Okay, so we've come across here. Now we're uh, kind of on the uh, second phase here of our movement. And now uh, I'm not going to be super slave to my compass just because I know I got those good features on my left and right that are going to funnel me in. And I know I got that good backstop of the top of the hill. Uh, so if I was kind of more slow and careful, I could you know, be really precise about following my azimuth and, and even counting my pace. However, in this situation, I think I'll save more time if I basically, you know, basically run there even if I overshoot my point a bit, you know, that, that good backstop is gonna catch me. And so in that case, then I can just stop and kind of reshoot myself from there. And if I need to make a precise, uh, you know, dead reckoning movement of shooting an azimuth from the hill and then counting my pace to the point, uh, I'll do so. But I think it'll make more sense just to kind of get to that area faster since I have uh, good terrain features that are gonna kind of funnel me in and uh, make sure I don't go too far. And uh, along the way, of course, I'm sanity checking myself. Say, does this make sense? Does this look like what we planned? And remember, we looked at the slope and we said, okay, it's, it's rising about 30 meters over the course of almost a kilometer. So it's about what we're seeing. We're heading generally uphill, but it's very, very uh, gradual climb. So this is all making sense. And at the bottom, we said it was about 300 meters from you know one side to the other, where it kind of slopes down. And yeah, if you see in the far distance there, it looks like it is sloping down on the side. It can't, yeah. But but it's 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 you know all the clues are kind of making sense to me, so that's good. Okay, now we're seeing a little bit of features here, so. Uh, it's always good and you got something to look at check it out and see if it's on the map so the first thing I'll do is orient it my map okay and take a look so we're seeing a bit of you know this kind of uh, uh, draw that's cutting in here and we're almost you know going to kind of cross it perpendicular so I think what we're seeing is this right here which would place us about right here so that means we're you know within about 150 meters of our point uh, so that's good. Uh, anytime you can just take a quick little 10 seconds to position fix yourself like that is always good. Never, if you got something you can read and you don't, uh, you're you're missing an opportunity to correct yourself in case in the case that you made a mistake. And if you're thinking, I know what I'm doing, I don't make mistakes. <laughs> well, I admire your confidence, but um, it's pretty pretty dangerous attitude. Um, Okay, so at this point, I might even kind of reset my pace count and actually kind of keep an eye on my pace counts because we know it's about 150 meters. Uh, so once I've, oh, there we go, right there. Okay, so let's take a look here. Uh, now, I turned on, like I said in the, in the previous video, I suggested you might want to turn on the uh, CP's show coordinates uh, it's very useful for as a beginner, and what this means is the the control points uh, grid is right there on it, and so I can confirm that this is the correct one. So it's a zero one five one six eight four zero. Yep, that's it. So that's the right one. Now, if you're you know more hardcore and you turn off that, then you won't know that this is your control point unless you confirm it. Right. So you would need to check out the lay of the land, double check your distances, make sure like, okay, is this definitely my control point before you write it down? Uh, now there, there will never be like two control points within a hundred meters of each other. Uh, but uh, so, you know, as long as you have a general sense of where you are, uh, you should be good. But uh, if you're confused at all, definitely, definitely double check and, and try to always know exactly where you are uh, as much as you can. So I'll go ahead and write down this ID code, uh, 8825. 
Uh, now, you might be wondering, like, hold on, the, the answer is already in there. Uh, that, that's temporary. That won't be in the final game. <laughs> that's just there kind of for debugging purposes. Um, okay, so we have, uh, we, you know, we made a good plan. We took some time. We, we made our best plan. We learned as much as we could before we left out. And then along the way, we used every clue that we could to, you know, kind of keep track of our position. We used both uh, dead reckoning and terrain association, you know, together. Uh, so that way, if for some reason there isn't good terrain I can read, or if I'm confused about the terrain I'm reading, I have that fallback of the dead reckoning. Be like, okay, well, I kind of have a sense of how far I came. I know what direction I followed, uh, and and vice versa. You know, so uh, that's how you can use some of these common techniques, uh, these common tactics, like attack points, backstops, uh, handrails, uh, together with dead reckoning to uh, always try to satisfy that first rule of land, land nav, which is always know where you are. Okay, so uh, I won't cover you know, getting back home because it should be pretty straightforward, uh, but that uh, provides an overview of some of the techniques you'll use and some of the decision-making process that you'll use. And uh, I hope this is helpful. Uh, I'll be going into more detail about these specific techniques, you know, kind of more in depth and uh, you know, one at a time. Uh, in future videos. Uh, until next time, I'll see you guys later.